Fine. This is an NBC News special report. Here is John Palmer. Good afternoon. At Cape Canaveral, they are go for launch at this hour for launch of the space shuttle Atlantis. The countdown is now proceeding less than five minutes now until the scheduled liftoff of the shuttle Atlantis. The shuttle and its five astronauts during the course of their five-day mission will deploy Galileo, an unmanned space vehicle that will fly to Jupiter, the trip taking about six years. Galileo is the most sophisticated and expensive unmanned spacecraft ever built, about $1,500,000,000. Powered by two plutonium engines, this has prompted some anti-nuclear activists to try to get a court order to block uh, this afternoon's scheduled launch. Uh, the court, though, has, uh, has turned that down. You're looking now at the Galileo. In uh, subsequent years, it's going to take two passes at Earth. It's going to take a rather circuitous route to Jupiter uh, before it gets there in uh, 1995. Let's go now to NASA and uh, listen to the voice of uh, launch control Lisa Malone as we follow this countdown. Delayed yesterday, delayed for 24 hours. Now all appears ready to go for launch in just a very, very short time now. Let's check in with NBC science correspondent Robert Bazell, who is down at the gate. Bob? John, the weather has been the only problem today, just as it was yesterday. The rain clouds came in and out, but today they went out. Yesterday they stayed in. It was a very close call. All morning long they've been watching these puffy rain clouds that seem insignificant to those of us who are standing around in the beautiful Florida sunshine, but they would be the constraint to prevent launch. The lightning, the electrical activity is, is the danger. Uh, other than that, there are no problems on board the Atlantis. It's been a very smooth countdown. It's been a very smooth countdown for two days. So we're now into the second day of a smooth countdown. We're coming up on two minutes and 45 seconds, and uh, we're looking for a very good uh, liftoff of the Atlantis right now. And then right now, all the events are, are being uh, run by a computer called the Ground Launch Sequencer. A computer on the ground does everything automatically. A crucial moment in the count always comes at T-minus 31 seconds, and it's at that moment that the ground computer hands over all the operations to the computer on board. As you mentioned, there are five astronauts on board, two women, three men. They're laying there on their back. They must be very anxious right now. Uh, as we look at the close-up of the, the, that's called the beanie cap that comes off the top of the external fuel tank right there. Uh, that's loaded with enormous amounts of liquid hydrogen and oxygen that will power the shuttle. Okay, and it looks like we're ready to go here, John. Yes, uh, of course, there was that weather problem earlier, similar to the weather problem we had yesterday. There was a weather problem at the primary emergency landing site in Morocco, so they moved that uh, emergency landing site uh, to Spain. Uh, so all appears to be in readiness, readiness uh, for the liftoff here. As you mentioned, the astronauts have been uh, aboard the spacecraft uh, Atlantis for quite some time now, about three hours. And they got a lot of couch time there yesterday, about three and a half hours. So they are indeed most anxious for this liftoff. As you can say, see, it's a beautiful sky there, deep blue at the Cape. Uh, all is in readiness and all appears to be going just fine with this countdown. Again, Lisa Malone, the voice of launch control, saying that everything seems Three to be going already, well. Three inches already and the liquid hydrogen tank is at flight pressure. Coming up now on one minute to the launch of the space shuttle Atlantis. A very one exciting minute. mission coming up T-minus one minute and counting. A five-day mission, five days and three the hours. The heaters on the booster joints are being deactivated. T-minus 45 seconds. T-minus 31 seconds. Atlantis go for auto sequence start. We have a go for auto sequence start. Atlantis's four redundant computers have primary control of critical vehicle functions through liftoff. 20. T-minus 20. 50. T-minus 15. 11. 10. 10 9. We have a go for main engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, we have ignition and liftoff of Atlantis and the Galileo spacecraft bound for Jupiter. Houston now controlling. Dallas 
Roger roll, Atlantis. Roll program initiated, about a 110-degree roll maneuver. This is the standard roll maneuver. Takes about 15 seconds here. Guidance confirmed, a good roll maneuver. Three engines throttling back now to 65% uh, as Atlantis passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. Just a minute, we're going to get... Rolls now at 65%. APU's looking good. Velocity, 2,000 feet per second. Main engine throttle up. Velocity now 1,400 feet per second. Downrange distance, three nautical miles. Atlantis, go at throttle up. There it is, there Engines it is. Engines now throttle back up. Engines now back to 104%, all systems performing well. Standing by for separation of these solid rocket boosters at two minutes and four seconds. Looks as though we're gonna have a spectacular view of the, uh, the engine separation, which uh, will be coming up here momentarily. Velocity now 2,700 feet per second, downrange 10 nautical miles. Separation coming up here just momentarily. And then Atlantis will be on its way into orbit, carrying with it the Galileo, the space probe to Jupiter. And there we have it. A beautiful, beautiful view of the separation, the pulling away as the spacecraft heads on separation into orbit. Separation of SRBs confirmed. Velocity now 4,200 feet per second, downrange 33 nautical miles. So there we have it, what appears to be a, a flawless launch liftoff of the space shuttle Atlantis from Cape Canaveral after being delayed because of Atlantis weather for 24 hours. Nominal. The performance nominal call. Performance nominal means that we are getting the expected thrust from the uh, combination of the SRBs and the uh, three main engines. Velocity now 4,800 feet per second, downrange 53 nautical miles. Atlantis, APU-1 to high speed. That's a real ship. Let's check in now with uh, Bob Bazell uh, at the Cape. Bob, how did it look to you? Uh, John, it looked as good as any shuttle launch has ever looked. It's a beautiful day, very humid. The crackling air put back the enormous force of the, of, of the engine thrust. So looks like Atlantis is finally on its way after a delay that really has been a delay since 1982 when this mission was supposed to originally be launched. But a lot of things went wrong. And uh, it's finally on its way to, to put this magnificent spacecraft on its way to Jupiter. Let's go now to, um, to Houston, where we have NBC News correspondent um, Dan Molina. He is there with uh, former astronaut Robert Overmeyer. Uh, Dan, there have been a lot of talk and uh, some complaints and worry uh, about the power pack aboard the Galileo because it is plutonium-powered, and there was some concern on the part of anti-nuclear activists that uh, should there be uh, an untoward incident, an explosion, if you will, uh, there could be a real problem of spraying toxic plutonium over Florida. Um, uh, apparently, uh, we're certainly over that threat as far as uh, things are concerned right now. Uh, what about that plutonium situation, Dan? Well, there was a uh, question, John, to begin with as to whether that was a legitimate threat. Certainly, the word plutonium conjures up the possibility of radioactive contamination in some people's minds. However, whether they're technically or even theoretically was a possibility of uh, plutonium contaminating Florida or anywhere, even if the shuttle could have some sort of catastrophic explosion like the Chapter explosion. That is a technical matter that uh, is of some doubt right now. As a matter of fact, some of the mainstream environmental groups that we checked with when there was so much noise being made about that last week said that they did not agree with those who had filed the lawsuit trying to stop the shuttle launch. They said that uh, they regarded it as such a remote possibility that they did not join the people who filed the lawsuit. Let me mention uh, one thing to you here, John. Colonel Overmeyer and I were just uh, chatting right before we went on the air. We heard a call that uh, 
one of the auxiliary power units had been ordered to high speed. Uh, perhaps Colonel Overmeyer could elaborate on that just a moment. That's right, uh, Dan. The uh, APU-1 was ordered to high speed, which is a precautionary move. Uh, as I hear it, it means that something in the controller on APU-1 is probably not controlling right at the nominal speed. By putting it to high speed, that uh, they override the uh, faulty uh, controller. That would be the most logical re uh, requirement for APU-1. Now, a uh, auxiliary power unit 1 does supply hydraulic power for the engine uh, monitoring that, but at the same time, there are backup systems, so it's a very minor annoyance, but it was a move that the uh, pilot on his side of the cockpit would have to put that uh, APU to the uh, high speed during during liftoff, which is a non-nominal uh, minor annoyance, but uh, certainly uh, probably not going to affect the mission here. Colonel Overmeyer speaks having been a pilot on one space shuttle mission and a shuttle commander on another. I noticed, Bob, as we were watching the countdown, that you reacted as I'm sure the astronauts in the spacecraft must have been reacting. Can we finally get this thing going? Those are tense moments. That's right, Dan. I'm sure that there was some very uh, nervous time there for him. You really, when you're out there, you really want to go. And when they finally got that go for launch, even though they had to change the uh, abort site, uh, when they got that go for launch, I'm sure they're very, very pleased. And uh, they've had one scrub, a suit drill, as, we, as we've called it in the past. Uh, they really wanted to go, and, and uh, I'm sure they're pleased to be going. Gentlemen, and it let's, seems uh, all, all let's, be going uh, well at this time. Let's at this point take another look at what was indeed a spectacular liftoff of the Space Shuttle Atlantis just a couple of minutes ago. We can see the main Five, engines firing up four, here for, again, three. a most spectacular liftoff. Delayed, though, two or three minutes today because of some concern of about the weather. Uh, way down range, but no real problems there at the Cape uh, for the liftoff. Again, the main mission here for the Atlantis, and they will start work on this in about six hours or so, is the deployment of the Galileo, uh, the most is sophisticated, the most expensive unmanned space vehicle that has ever been built, costing one and a half billion dollars. A most exciting scientific venture there, the Galileo traveling to Jupiter and uh, taking about five or six years to get there, rather long trip, uh, but it, uh, the scientists say, will be most worth it when it gets there. You can just see the roll maneuver uh, there of the, um, of the space, space shuttle Atlantis. Continuing to check in with, uh, with uh, mission control now down uh, down in, in Houston, all continues to go well on this trip. It's going to the astronauts. Five astronauts will be up there about uh, five days and three hours. We are certainly approaching that period now, all going well for uh, a go for an orbit condition. And we have no indication that it'll be anything but that. Five astronauts aboard the Atlantis this afternoon, three men and two women. It's interesting to note the number of Purdue graduates that seem to, to go up in space. The commander of this mi mission is Navy Captain Donald Williams, He's been an astronaut since 1979, a graduate of Purdue University. There have been 17 Purdue graduates that have become astronauts. In fact, there are, there are two members of this mission that that uh, graduated from uh, Purdue. Main engine cutoff confirmed by our booster officer. We go about 25 nine plus three ten on base. H nine. Roger that, Don. You look marvelous going up. Uh, Dan Molina in Houston. What do the scientists uh, hope to learn from this uh, probe of Jupiter? Well, the uh, the mission can only be Atlantis, described uh, no uh, as as a spectacular advance for planetary science, John. It's uh, so far, when Voyager did its flyby of Jupiter, it was only able to photograph, uh, study in detail, small sections of the planet. Uh, as Galileo uh, orbits Jupiter, it will be doing very detailed studies of, of most of the planet. And uh, the volcanic activity, for example, is something of enormous interest to scientists here on Earth. Jupiter remains for them a laboratory that in many ways uh, mirrors the origins of our own Earth. Okay. And uh, the wealth of science is, is nothing short of amazing. Thank you very much, Dan. Of course, uh, today we are following a major story, uh, a story of, of great proportions, that being the earthquake in San Francisco. We have been covering it for some hours now. We would like to bring you an update on the situation. The uh, confirmed dead now is listed at 272, 253 of them 
We're trapped in the upper section of a bridge. You're right now looking at the Bay Bridge, uh, the Oakland Bay Bridge, and the upper level of that bridge collapsed, as you can see, down into the lower uh, area there of the, of the bridge. The entire platform did not collapse into the sea, but as you can see, there is major damage and that bridge is blocked. But the major problem is a little bit down the road from that, and that is Interstate 880 that you've been hearing so much about. And again, authorities believe that...